I was doing Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. We're in New Orleans, and it sounded very, very, it sounded like a wonderful, basic American movie, of American, almost a Western. And you were going to uh, see America, but they saw, and, and think of the times when Kennedy was shot, Martin Luther King was shot, all this violence was there, uh, the, the, the Kent State, these students were shot. It was a very bleak period in American history, and, and they were portraying, and we were just getting uh, integration, and there was a lot of violence involved there. So they saw an America that was full of violence, not the Norman Rockwell smiling people of America. And uh, they really were basing their movie technique on the, the it was called Cahier de Cinema, you know, the, the sort of naturalistic street movies that were done by the Italians. And uh, they, they, they weren't trying to be wild, they were movie makers. They were making a movie and they, they were trying to cast real people in various scenes. I mean, the, there was absolutely no money in it, but it was, it was very interesting. And, and I liked them very much, but just Dennis would go seemed to just go off, and, and from reading about it, he, this was a period of his life when he was uh, on, uh, you know, drinking too much and, and, and uh, whatever. So I, I just didn't want to be part. I adored mm. Peter. I, I admired him. He was trying to bring out the best in Dennis and to see that he made the movie that they wanted to make. And he would... Uh, uh, almost to act like a big brother. Uh, in fact, the whole whole team, Bill Haywood, was part of this. They were all good friends. And he really nurtured Dennis and, and coddled him and tried to help him to, to overcome his madness and make this wonderful movie. So it was... It was uh, Peter was remarkable. I have one picture where he's petting a little dog through a fence, and I feel as though uh, he's projecting where he ha sees himself as this this little stray that's being helped and, and given some affection. Uh, somehow he, he looked like someone who, he was a very sweet, well-mattered, uh, tender young man. I saw them as puppies. They, 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 they you know, and I, I felt like I was the uh, uh, the, the the border poly her, collie, sort of herding them to get them into the right places at the right time. So, anyway, it was a wonderful experience the time I had with them. It's very important they have a rapport. You establish a rapport. In fact, what I've done is put the camera down. For instance, with John Lennon and Yoko Ono when we met him, uh, it was a story they wanted. It was for a major sympathetic magazine with millions of viewers, and they wanted they wanted it. And when we got there, we did fine. With she was in the middle of uh, having to go. She was in the hospital trying to uh, hold a baby, and John Lennon was had a sleeping bag, and he was staying there with her, which in those days was unheard of, but he managed to get that done. And we wanted a picture of that. We knew we were going to do a story, but we wanted to get that, and we got that. But I really hadn't met them and spent time with them. We got the picture, and we basically got out of there. Then we met again to try and, and make the story. Uh, and by story in those days, photography did picture essays. So we would, I was doing, along with the writer, a picture essay about them. And... Uh, uh, I felt that they were backing away a little bit reluctant to figure things out. The body language told me that. And it felt, it felt a little impassable. So I asked the writer, I said, look, why don't we see if we can take a break from them and come back to it? And what we did is we, I said to John, look, you know, right now, you seem a little reluctant. Maybe you have other things you have to do. But, you know, Betty, my, my, the writer is only here for a few days. Uh, I'll be continuing the story, but she's only here for a few days, and she wants to do some shopping along King's Road, and I know, and I'd like to take it. So would you mind if we just call it quits for today, and let's meet tomorrow whenever it's good for you? 
And John said, just a second. And he went over to Yoko and talked, and he came back and very warmly said, can we come along? And the ice was broken. We had backed off, and we gave them a chance. And because when you're doing really good photographs, it's a joint effort between the subject and you. And unless you get that rapport, if you are uh, like a paparazzi taking their image, or if they feel like they're primitives, who their image is being stolen, it's a terrible situation. It's an aggressive situation. That's not the kind of work I do. I'm interested in the inner person. And, and uh, I, I, I want to see, I, I, I've been called a romantic in my photographs because I, I often look for the beauty in people rather than, it's, I, I feel it's e easy to get an ugly shot. And some people think that's very insightful. I, I don't. So uh, it isn't that I want just smiles. I just want the soul. And uh, uh, so I, I, or it's just a prejudice. I just look for their beauty, their grace. Not being an actor, I've done some pretty stupid things. You know, like there was a point with John Wayne when he was doing a, a part. This is in Africa. And he is supposedly talking to someone. So he's... And I'm at the other end, so I can. I want to get his face, his eyes, this, the other thing. And I'm behind the camera, and I'm moving around to try to find an angle. And finally, he stopped in the middle and starts screaming at me, Susan, stop moving around. How am I going to focus on my spot with you moving around like that? And they caught that on film, and it was sort of, sort of fun. He wasn't too serious about being, you know... Uh, uh, offended by me, but it was just very hard as an actor to focus when somebody is behind the camera moving. I, I just did not fully understand the art of acting, and I still don't. And I still don't understand entirely the scene. I, I had been doing a lot of work for uh, fashion magazines, for Vogue and, and so on, and House of God, and where we cleaned up the set, made everything look perfect. You know, if there were any little crumbs around, we brushed them away. So I'm on a set with, uh, uh, oh God, never mind. And there's a garbage can, and they want me to stay out. You know, every time you ruin a scene, it costs the filmmakers money, and they don't like that. So I'm there for Life magazine, and I say, I'll stay out of the way. Don't worry, I've worked on sets before. I was sure that this garbage can uh, was out of the way. No, but they wanted that in the shot. And I was there. So, you know, you can't always, uh, I, I've made a lot of, it's very difficult. There are a lot of things that you, you have to, there are times when you can't shoot while it's going, because they'll hear the click on, on, in, in, the, uh, in the, the footage, and they can't take that out. <laughs> so much of what a director does is watch and encourage the actors to do what they do best, to, in a way, bring in their own take on something. And so much of it is just being there observing, saying, that's fine. So, and that must be very hard for actors and actresses to do, mm. to be yourself. Mm. And, and when they do it well in their parts, then they become stars. You know, like John Wayne is, was always John Wayne. So no matter what the part, a certain personality comes through. Mm. And they know how to project it. They manage to do it. Oh, Marcel Rothschild, what a charmer. He could not. He was, he was the classic, you know, uh, Lothario. He could not leave a girl unflirted with. He just had to, I mean, whoever was on the set, here everyone was in the water naked. This was the, it's supposed to be the 60s, an orgy scene in the water. Everyone's naked or nudity. I come on th this location, I'm fully clothed, and he starts flirting with me out of the water. You know, he starts saying, you know, you must take off your clothes and come on in. You are very attractive. You would add a lot to this scene and so on. And it, it, it was a dirt. So I started flirting back. We got wonderful pictures. These are, for, uh, these are from the scene. But it was, it was great fun. He made it very, very charming. He was a very charming man. And it was nice to be welcomed.
and flirted with. My goodness gracious, that was very nice. You somehow find a connection, and uh, it isn't necessarily being a flatterer, or it isn't. It's something where it somehow you suddenly you 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 start talking, and you somehow tune in to each other just as human beings because they don't need me to praise their work or do an analysis of it. Uh, there are big experts doing that. Uh, somehow in a very short period of time, you have to evoke their respect for what you do. And I don't know how you do it. You just have, uh, I think it's empathy. You just see them eye to eye as another human being, and they then see you as another. You just don't deal with, as best you can, you don't deal with their fame and celebrity, or you just try to relate as another human being who's trying to do a job, and you're asking them to cooperate with you and, and, and make this thing come off. Uh, it was all. It was all art. To me, the vision, what you did with composition, what you did with uh, emphasizing something and so on, which there, there are techniques. You know, if you want something to be important in a picture, whether it's a painted picture or a photograph, size has something to do with it. You know, if you have a great big blob, that may be the focus of the picture. Or if you have all gray and one, t one tiny spot of red, the red spot may be the focus. There are, are, are things that are things the way the eye is led around into mm. the perspective of a picture or the way it's led around on a flat surface of a picture. And those, those uh, uh, rules or those uh, uh, methods that you use to, to uh, express something or emphasize something and so on. It's the same, whether it's photography, engraving, or or uh, uh, or painting. Mm -hmm. You know, the visual elements are the same. Of course, the techniques are different, and you have to learn different techniques. So I saw no conflict. I couldn't care less about, you know, mixing up a batch of paints. I I really cared about the image. And one of the things that particularly attracted me to photography was this, the, the moment, the sense of moment that you could catch a dancer at a peak moment. You could catch a person when their face broke up and they were sad. And I, I felt that there was an immediacy and also a worldliness about photography, which was not just wrenching things out. You could, of course, in photography, do something completely based on your... Uh, imagination and something abstract, and I have done those things. You know, like looking through a microscope became and 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 photographing yeast multiplying, for instance, which I did with you know a very fine uh, microscope. Um, it's beautiful abstraction, but somehow I felt uh, my interest was the world. You know, and what was happening, whether it was a person or a scene and even a, 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 a landscape or still life. I, I enjoyed uh, the worldliness. I did take a lot of pains to make the photograph probably look more painterly than most photographers try to do. I really didn't like the look of uh, what I used to call the Eastman Kodak display in Grand Central Station, which was a Kodachrome blue sky. Uh, the likes of which you really don't quite ever see in nature, and and then a very green landscape, and and then some you know fleshy-looking smiley person in the middle of it. You know that didn't appeal to me, mm. and uh, I looked for different kind of images. You know things that that somehow had tied in with this my my notions of what a a, a picture would make a good picture if it was a painting in terms of the way it's composed or the way it's presented. I love using and have used all my life telephoto lenses, which flatten the perspective. Um, makes people look fatter, too, so sometimes I can't use it.